kind of dawn on you that you were part of a movement that helped bring down one of the most powerful empires in human history. What empire is that? <laughs> the Soviet Union. <laughs> Sure, Iron Curtain might not have come down had it not been for rock and roll. Let's go! Rock and roll is freedom. We have rock and roll. Since the wall come down, I could never imagine. You can't stop people from enjoying music. Rock and roll is freedom. Rebellion, freedom. And so you can feel in the room here this energy coming like that. It's the truth in one. Power chord. There's no stronger force in the world than music. None. The Iron Curtain has descended across the continent. Ich bin ein Berliner. Thus begins the Cold War. Rock and roll music, books about political freedom, and the Bible were all viewed by the tyrants in charge of the Soviet Union as subversive. And you know what? They were right. Everybody on the world wants to be free. It was a tumultuous time. All the musicians were doing everything they could to get out of Vietnam. We just wanted to rock. We are, we are survivors. We're not a liberty. The world is free. The solidarity pushing in Poland and all that together and the youth revolution caused the whole thing to unravel. The Iron Curtain is not impenetrable. Our music was bleeding into them. The music was so incredible. The rock and roll shrank the world. Things are changing. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Almost a generation ago, and for nearly 50 years, a far-flung eastern empire and a vast western nation built an arsenal of fearsome weapons preparing to fight a war everybody hoped would never happen and nobody could ever win. They spent endless treasure building thousands of bombers and missiles, each of which could vaporize an entire city in a blinding instant. Several times they came close to fighting that war and possibly even destroying the human race. These two mighty arsenals faced each other across a barrier that divided the world in two and cut Europe in half. The most infamous part of that barrier was a concrete and steel wall 12 feet high, 96 miles long, with 300 watchtowers and 20 bunkers. Nearly 200 people were killed trying to cross it, yet, what finally breached that wall, in part, was the most innocent and unlikely thing of all. A unique American creation that had nothing to do with bombs or missiles, or even politics, really. Rock and roll music. None of the great men Thomas Carlyle was talking about predicted the fall of the Berlin Wall or the collapse of the Soviet Union. And rock and roll, like all the arts, wasn't invented by Carlyle's great men. It was invented by kids playing in garages. So why should we care about what the great men or big celebrities have to say about anything? History, after all, is made up of everybody and belongs to everybody. There could truly be millions of different people and artists in this story, and their stories would be just as true as the ones who are in this film. Everybody is an expert on their own lives. The story of rock and roll in the Iron Curtain is told in one of the chapters of a book entitled Seven Events That Made America, America. 
It was written by Larry Schweikert, who's a professor of history at the University of Dayton. This is a section of the Berlin Wall. It was brought to me by Professor Larry Flockersy back in about 1989 after he made a trip to Germany. It's a, a literally a piece of history. To my knowledge, this is the only time in human history walls were built to keep people in as opposed to keep invaders out. But before Larry Schweikert was a history professor, he was a rock and roll drummer. I was in the high school band. Uh, I put my set together one drum at a time, literally. I started with a snare drum, then got a bass drum, and on and on and on. I wanted to play in a rock band, so the minute I got out, literally the next day after I technically graduated, that Sunday I was in a van headed for Peoria, Illinois. We played in Peoria, and uh, <laughs> never forget setting up one time, and we didn't have a single amplifier plugged in, and the manager came out and said, you're too loud. <laughs> <laughs> he knew, <laughs> he knew, uh, and, and I was, I was a loud drummer, I believe drums are meant to be hit. One, two. What is it about rock and roll that could have had such a profound effect, far beyond anything its artists or creators ever imagined or intended? Rock and roll is freedom. Rock and roll is all about the truth. It's the truth in one power chord. Rebellion, freedom. You know, being able to, to get so immersed in, in, in the music, it takes you away. And rock and roll makes you feel like you're free. You got something to live for, and uh, it's just totally encompassing to the spirit to hear it. It's just freedom. Rock and roll is freedom. It makes you do stuff, you know? It makes you do bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a, as a kid going to many uh, Baptist church services and hearing sermons against rock and roll. And, one of the things that always stuck with me was a, a minister said that rock and roll, when you hear it, the first thing it starts moving is your pelvis. Because of the beat, because of some of the lyrics, uh, it's about freedom, you know, especially about what Jim was saying. And uh, break on through to the iron, to the uh, wall, <laughs> Berlin Wall. Rock and roll affects the Iron Curtain to it. First of all, it's inspiration. Uh, it provides the inspiration for people behind the Iron Curtain who have this feeling of liberty, of, of human freedom. They're inspired by rock lyrics that talk about uh, uh, you know, freeing your soul, uh, gonna take myself to Woodstock, set my soul free, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're inspired by all the call to human action that's in rock and roll. It, it's all about doing something to improve society. So there's the inspirational element of the rock songs themselves. What is rock and roll? Well, the dictionary defines it as a form of popular music that evolved in the 1950s from rhythm and blues, characterized by the use of electric guitars, a strong rhythm with an accent on the offbeat, and youth-oriented lyrics. Or as Louis Armstrong said when asked to define jazz, man, if you gotta ask, you'll never know. Can any other music form be as potent?